Okay, so it's time to upgrade the uh, power wagon with some off-road lights. So what I have here are rigid industry 3-inch LED pod lights. They consume uh, 30 watts of power and put out over 3,000 lumens. Now there are a few reasons why I chose rigid over others. Uh, first of all, they have a good name brand. They're well known for durability and quality. Uh, but also these are just the right size for me and put out the right amount of uh, brightness. So I compared these to some lights that I have mounted on my Jeep, some old Hella uh, HID lamps. Those are uh, putting out about 3,000 lumens, and uh, these are going to be a little bit brighter even though they're smaller. So I think these are going to work pretty well for me. Uh, the only problem is how to install them. So I've been struggling with that question for a little bit. Uh, I thought about um, putting up a, a light bar. I really don't want to change the, uh, the bumper at all. And so uh, I started looking around, started thinking, you know, could I just mount them to the existing bumper and have a nice clean stock look? And uh, I didn't want to drill any holes into the bumper. But I was able to find a couple of tabs, and I'll show you that in a moment. But uh, there's one little tab here that's not used, and one tab on the other side of the bumper as well. And I think if I can tie into those tabs with some brackets, then I can mount these up right on top of the bumper. So it looks something like that, and I won't have to do any major modifications. So I'm going to try to set that up today, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here is that uh, tab I'm talking about right here. It's just a blank tab not being used for anything, and it's got a hole in the middle. Now just for reference, it's right next to the, uh, the right side tow hook, and there's a similar tab on the left side of the bumper next to the left side tow hook. And so my idea here is just to take a, an L bracket that uh, can fit back behind that tab and uh, mount the light to the, uh, the top of the L bracket on the uh, top of the front bumper there. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see, this one's not quite wide enough. Okay, so I looked around in my stash to see what I might have that might work, and I found a couple of L brackets. Now, unfortunately, this is the uh, width I need. I need something around this width, but uh, this L bracket is not quite long enough. And this one is long enough, but it's not quite wide enough. So uh, if I were to cut it off here, it would be about the right length. But I need uh, additional thickness here, uh, or additional width. So I'm going to have to make something. Uh, I don't really want to go to the hardware store. It's a bit late, and I think this is going to take more time to drive there and, and come back. Uh, of course, I could order something, but um, I'd rather just uh, get this done today if possible. So I do have some flat bar. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to bend it up and uh, drill a couple of holes, and uh, I think that's going to work for me. Okay, so I finished up both L brackets. Uh, nothing fancy, but these uh, should work. And basically how this will work is uh, I have this uh, larger bolt here, just a single bolt. It'll need to be torqued down quite a bit so that uh, this doesn't rotate. So this larger bolt will go into the tab on the bumper, and then the, uh, the light will be mounted up top here uh, with this little bolt. So these uh, just need a, a coat of paint, and uh, then they'll be ready to install. Okay, so last night I went ahead and painted these guys up. I put a couple of coats of black enamel on them, and if I do say so myself, they look pretty darn good. So the only thing left to do now is go ahead and get them installed. There's only one bolt holding the uh, bracket onto the bumper, so I'm putting some uh, thread lock here on this uh, bolt just to make sure it doesn't come loose. Okay, off-road lights are in place. Those little brackets that I uh, put together worked out pretty good. There's just barely enough room for my hands and just enough room for the bolt up here 
as well. Uh, and there's just uh, barely clearance for the grill, but there is clearance. So uh, overall, it worked out pretty well. That, um, that solution does seem to work. Okay, so I have the uh, off-road lights installed. Now it's time to do the wiring. Now, uh, in my opinion, the stock fog lights on this truck just aren't really effective. And that's because they're aimed right in front of the truck, and they're just not very bright. But if I can combine some supplemental lighting so that I have a nice long wide beam pattern, I think the uh, combined beam pattern with the fog lights plus the uh, supplemental light will uh, be really effective for off-road use and for uh, heavy thick fog. So that's my plan here. I'm going to be using the off-road lights as supplemental lights. I'm going to aim the, uh, the off-road lights so that the beam pattern is just above where the current fog light pattern cuts off. And uh, since I'll be using the fog lights and the off-road lights together, I'm going to go ahead and wire them together as well. So that way, when I uh, turn on the OEM fog lamp switch on my dash, all four lights come on at the same time. That way I don't have to drill another hole in my dash to install an aftermarket switch like the one that came with the off-road lights. Now to make sure I don't overload the existing OEM fog lamp circuit, I've replaced the original halogen bulbs with some uh, low-power LED bulbs. They only consume 8 watts each, or 16 watts total. Now the off-road lights here, they consume uh, 30 watts each, or 60 watts total. So my total power consumption, off-road lights plus fog lights, they'll be consuming about 76 watts, which is uh, still less than the original halogen bulbs, which consume 90 watts. But uh, in this case, I'm going to be throwing out a lot more light. Now, just like on most vehicles, I can't operate the uh, fog lamps and the high beams at the same time on this truck. So that is one potential drawback to the wiring solution that I'm using here. You know, if I'm off-road and I want to turn on the off-road lights, uh, I can't have the uh, high beams on at the same time because as soon as I hit the uh, fog lamp switch, the high beams automatically turn off. Now, there is a way to override that limitation, but I really don't think I need to. You know, in my experience, I have uh, off-road lights on my Jeep that are almost as bright as these off-road lights. And what I found is that uh, when I turn on the off-road lights and then put the uh, high beams on at the same time, it really doesn't add that much visibility because uh, the high beams just kind of get drowned out by the existing off-road lamps. But uh, on the other hand, if I do want to change it down the road, it's uh, really not a difficult change. Okay, just a quick note with regards to the wiring. You know, uh, you may be tempted to use these crimp style connectors. Now, I've used these before. They're super fast and easy to use, but only in low current situations. You know, these uh, off-road lamps are going to be drawing several amps of the current each. So I really think the right solution is to solder the wires. Now, uh, because the wires are outside of the vehicle, I'll also be using some marine grade heat shrink tubing that has an adhesive in the middle. So when I add heat to shrink the tube, that adhesive will also melt. And when it cools off, I'll have a nice watertight seal. Okay, I can see that the adhesive melted and uh, this guy's shrunken down. So that's it. We're good to go. This is um, going to be a really good connection and it's not going to corrode or get uh, any moisture in there. So I'm going to uh, further seal it up with uh, some silicone tape once I get the, um, the wire loom on, uh, on this wire here. So I'll do that next. You gotta hold it for a while for it to uh, seal on itself. But once it does, it makes a really good connection. It's almost uh, solid silicone once it uh, seals to itself. And uh, the way to get it off, you'd have to basically cut it off with a razor knife or something. Okay, so that's it. So this goes to the stock fog light, and this goes to the rigid off-road light. And now electrically, they're basically one and the same. So I'm just putting a little silicone bulb grease in the uh, connectors here, just to uh, prevent any water penetration. But uh, these connectors from Rigid, these are really uh, high quality. These are automotive style um, connectors. And uh, probably don't need to do this, but um, 
It's just a little added insurance. And that fits down in there like that. Okay, so I have the uh, stock fog lights unplugged so I can just test out the uh, rigid off-road lights. So uh, I'm going to go push the fog light button on the inside of the cab and let's see if these things work. Yeah, I'd say that works. Okay, so here's the combination switch that now operates my uh, fog lights and the off-road lights. So when the uh, lights are on, I need to turn the off-road lights on. I just push this guy in, and again, that'll turn on both the fog lights and the off-road lights. And when I want to turn off the uh, fog and off-road lights, I just push it again, and they go off. So it's nice and convenient. There's a nice clean look to it because uh, it's an OEM switch, and I don't have a weird aftermarket switch sticking in my dash somewhere. Okay, so I'm really happy with these results. I didn't have to drill any holes in the bumper. I didn't have to install an aftermarket switch on my dash. And these lights, they're really bright. I think these are gonna work out for me really well. So that about wraps up this install. And as always, thank you for watching.